Don in London, hello. June 2nd, my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance was alcohol. My addictive behaviour was around people, places and things. Being in the right place, with the right people, with the right things, and often a drink in hand when I was socialising. Or working late, or doing things which involved alcohol. So, what happened? Well, 35 years of drinking. I don't often say that these days, because I forget just how long it has been since I had a drink. It's seven years, one day. So, how am I feeling this morning? Well, relieved, actually, to be a human being. I have freedom of choice today. I don't need to worry about going to an off-license, a supermarket, a bar, a pub, a restaurant, and taking a drink. And equally, I'm no longer obsessive around being in the right, with the right people, in the right place, doing the right things. I don't know what the right thing is these days until it starts to happen. So, no longer in the grip of addiction, and simply having freedom of choice on a daily basis. So what's made this possible? Well, family, friends, medical people, professionals who helped me stay alive long enough to find a moment of clarity and that moment of clarity was simply this I could not beat the problem on my own I was the problem I was drinking alcohol and I had all the obsessive and compulsive behaviours associated with it around shame, guilt, covering up, isolating not, not, not wanting to admit to the world that I couldn't sort myself out I'd always managed somehow to sort myself out, at least I thought I had. But what I realised, I followed a career when asked, changed career when asked, went out with the right girl at the right time, but it turned out to be the wrong girl, or rather the right girl, but the wrong circumstances most often. They were with me, and I had a best friend which I couldn't put down, and that was a drink, alcohol. So. I guess I look back sometimes and think to myself, how could it have been? And then I realise all that happened was life experience, my life experience, a book, if you like, if I were to write one, of how I got to be sober and find freedom. And I had an email this morning from someone asking me, how did I cope with the idea, or how did I deal with the idea that I might have to go to AA, that's the Fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, how did I cope with the idea that I might have to go there every day to stop myself from drinking? And the sim simple answer is, I only thought that way for a little while until I realised that everybody in the fellowship was on their own unique, authentic path. Sober first, and the rest of life can happen. And I had to mourn or grieve the loss of my best friend for a little while, that's alcohol, because it made the world go round it took the edge off, it seemed to oil the wheels of relationships, whatever they happened to be. And then I couldn't do it anymore. So it wasn't surprising that I had a, f a, f a funny feeling of withdrawal, cravings, wishful thinking about going backwards rather than forwards. So life goes on in a forward motion, but if we get stuck in our history, yes, we will feel like we've been, we've had something taken away from us which we really needed without realising we were addicted to certain attitudes and certain behaviours associated with the addiction. So these days, free today, one day at a time, and if you, if you had asked me, can you do this for a lifetime, I would have said no, because I wouldn't be able to guarantee I could stop drinking forever. I might promise you that I might have stopped drinking, but I wouldn't have been able to do it. So a cry for help and into the dark and actually it was the most enlightening moment in my whole life that I could not do everything on my own. I couldn't fix myself or another thing. I had to stop fixing and living. That was it. Go to living rather than fixing. So if I live life in the moment and life is busy, which it is, then drink becomes a secondary thought. In fact, I forget about it, I should think, for most, most of each day, unless I'm doing these videos and talking about what is recovery. 
and even when I'm talking recovery it's not about the drink it's about the lifestyle it's about living one day at a time I'm not trying to cram everything into one day so I've had to slow down and say yes I'm a human being yes I need to learn on a daily basis how to be human how to learn each day and not to try and fix myself or the world because the world is as it may be right now so how did AA help me? well <clears throat> I, had a, I had to overcome a prejudice against an organisation which was there to, to save my life because it meant I had to give up what I thought was my best friend alcohol and that's a hateful thing to have to deal with on a daily basis if you are looking to be back in control of everything to put yourself at the centre of the universe and actually by not being at the centre of the universe and saying well I'm just another human being on the planet with uh, a better outlook if I don't drink one day at a time and just do it for one day then life can work so how does, how does Alcoholics Anonymous work for everybody? well on this card is what is called the AA preamble and it's a, a statement if you like which we share at the beginning of meetings where what you see is what you get in a meeting you have good experiences and bad experiences of meetings but often the bad experiences of meetings tell us about the madness of people who are coming out of an addiction so there are all sorts of different types of meeting and no two are the same but we might meet people in the rooms of AA in different, different meetings depending on where we live and what's going on so the AA preamble reads as this Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking that's the only, the only criteria I've left my email on, I'll just turn it off the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy neither endorses nor opposes any causes our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety so you can imagine if you've got only one requirement for membership being a desire to stop drinking uh, everybody is included if they have a desire to stop drinking and the reason why AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution is because every single person in it probably is so the fellowship of AA a broad church 12 steps and 12 traditions holding the whole thing together but everybody in it is different has di different life experience, different background but one similarity a desire not to drink today so when you go to meetings of AA you will find people who have all the outlooks, all the attitudes and all the behaviours which we may not like or we may like because that's just how we are too and if that's so you're going to encounter faith, belief understandings about how organisations should be people wanting to control their destiny all of that but the steps and the single requirement of desire not to drink and the fellowship is not about being affiliated to anything and it's about freedom of choice not to drink on a daily basis so that sober comes first and the rest of life can happen and you can form your own opinion and your own outlook about what is working for you so you will hear every story of connection to something or other and that's where the experience, strength and hope comes from life experience so we're going to hear things that we like and we're going to hear things that we don't like and then we sort out what is right for ourselves and what works in the program is the toolkit the 12 steps which do not require you to believe in anything other than what you believe in for yourself and the 12 traditions of fellowship suggestions around our behaviour toward unity service and recovery so people will always go beyond those boundaries because that's what humans do they push the, we push the boundaries 
But when it comes to the 12 steps for sobriety and the 12 traditions for unity, service and recovery, we tend to understand what is good for, the, for everyone rather than just ourselves. So that's the reason, part of the reason why I do these, is to share experience, experience, strength and hope. And in the email I got this morning, questioning whether I had to follow what other people told, told me to do, actually nobody tells anybody what to do if they've got any sense in AA, because that means you're trying to control and manipulate. So if you find people who are trying to do that to you in the fellowship, it's best to leave them alone to get on with their own their own life. Not to criticise them because that's just the way they are, but you don't have to follow them. You're free to choose your path and that's the most important part. Unique authentic people following their own unique authentic path. And the danger is, if we think we've got the solution, we share it with enthusiasm, including our opinions and everything associated with how we live our lives. So that is why it is always good to listen to the similarities and not the differences. The program, 12 Steps, 12 Steps of Action to be Open, Honest and Willing. And June is all about Step 6 for me. And it's covered in this book, Daily Reflections, this one. One step a month. So January was about powerlessness over alcohol and life being unmanageable if we drink. That's the 100% step we can do a day at a time to remain sober and not indulge in our substance or behaviour and move on from it. And then step two in February came to believe a power greater than us could restore us to, san to sanity. And by the time we stop drinking and start listening and listen to similarities about how to recover, something starts to happen. And then in step three, which I covered in March, all about letting go and letting good things happen. Let go, let go the old drinking life or addicting life and move into a sober life. Let go and let good. So as we let go the old way of behaving, we have an enormous gap which we can fill with rubbish again if we're not too careful rather than maybe try to do the steps. Step four, a life story to identify uh, the, na the exact nature of our wrongs over the years and also the rights as well it was a self-appraisal of assets and liabilities and then in step five in May it was all about sharing the exact nature of our wrongs with another person and a higher power of our choosing if we have one and you, don't ne you don't necessarily have to have one I haven't turned my telephone off either Apologies. Oh, yeah, apologies for that. <coughs> so we come to step six, all about defects of character and having them removed. Well, the defects of character come out of our old behaviour around addiction to substance and behaviour. So how do we let go of that? Well, we started in the process by doing the steps as far as we've got, by especially doing the life story and then sharing it with another human being in step four and step five. So we find out what was holding us back and making, making us feel like drinking again. And most often in my life it was fear, fear of not being good enough, fear of being found out, fear of letting people down, fear of showing myself up or being shamed by people. And these days, because I need to keep on learning with humility, Shame and guilt seem to have gone by the wayside. I will get the odd pang of things I've done in the past, which I regret, and if I've been able to make restitution, I have. But it was fear, putting on a brave face, and a brittle ego, keeping the world out from the real me who needed help. Those were my primary defects of character. And they may fall into uh, the seven deadly sins in many ways, which is a sort of biblical, biblical reference. But there are also the, the virtues as well. So the life story gave me the sins and the virtues of my life. And they feed very well into step six, the removal of these defects on a daily basis. 
and it is on a daily basis that we can look at it we can't say remove these please uh, higher power or God please God remove my defects today but we can say I have got some defects which will manifest if life goes bad and I get into a bad attitude and I start to behave badly so step six is contingent on the day I ask for help and that comes through the fellowship or through people anywhere in life to stop the old behaviour coming back and to have the new behaviour which is to have the humility to keep on le learning so it says, if someone says to me can you do that I can give a truthful answer rather than in the past saying yes I can do that and then wonder how I was going to do it I often, I often learn very quickly how to do things but that doesn't mean I gave an honest answer I should have said maybe with a bit of help and a bit of learning and a bit of wisdom I can learn that and do it fairly quickly but I will need some mentoring maybe around what's going to happen next so in other words rather than do it alone and be, be sure that that's the only way I've learned that I can do things by including people and it, the inclusion being part of my life so the daily reflections today are around about step six it says here the upward path and it can be quite difficult this upward path because I, I've actually found that it's an upward and downward path just as life is my life experience is up and down but sober principles and the 12 steps keep me on track so this is what it says the upward path page well I won't go to page numbers but June 2nd here are the steps we took these are the words that lead into 12 steps in their direct simplicity they sweep aside all psychological and philosophical considerations about the rightness of the steps so in other words we don't have to debate what is the psychological thing or the philosophical stuff behind each step they're very st it's just simple steps of attitude and behavior change in us but that's the hardest thing because we're looking for what might be behind it and what could go wrong they describe what I did I took the steps and sobriety was the result these words do not, sim do not imply that I should walk the well-trodden path of those who went before but rather that there is a way for me to become sober and that is the way that it is a way I shall have to find in other words we find our own path unique authentic to us based on our life experience and what is happening to us it is a new path one that leads to infinite light at the top of the mountain the steps advise me the footholds that are safe and about the chasms to avoid they provide me with the tools I need during the many many parts of the solitary journey of my soul in other words how do we deal with our inner being through all these ups and downs when I speak of this journey I should share my experience strength and hope with others and it is a new path one that leads to infinite light at the top of the mountain well I guess my personal experience or my experience strength and hope is that uh, the light at the top of the mountain it's more on a plateau most of the time and the, the light comes up like the sun each day that I can have good experiences and bad experiences and I was chatting with somebody on Monday about they say you always seem to have a smile on your face how is that when you know you face quite tormenting times with uh, family with your other conditions like I have type 1 diabetes and clinical depression why do you why is it you seem to be smiling all the time and the answer is I'm not smiling all the time but if I'm in a place of understanding and have humility to learn and understand that some things will be the way they are some things are s sad some things are joyful and I don't know where they're going to be but if I have these 12 steps to help me and I ask for help through meetings or I ask for help from a higher power and the, I've understood now the universe is my higher power it's the greatest gift of learning learning how to be me and how I live included in the world as it is today and that it is forever changing as our people 
So if I can do that, I'm on track. So the basic question is, can I be sober today? And the answer is yes, if I know how I feel, why, and what can I do? And I live the 12-step program, which is about living my path of life and being included so that I find the truth of what's going on, how to love people and love them back, and keep on getting wisdom from others. That is the most simple way of looking at it. So I don't have to hide away because I don't know. I don't have to hide away because I'm still addicted to something. Or maybe I'm just addicted to learning life today. And it's okay. I am not the fount of all knowledge. I'm just the same as anybody else. I can be me. I don't have to be important to other people. All I need is to remind myself it's important to be sober, that I can be with other people. So these 12 steps and 12 traditions, step 6. Step 6 just reads simply as, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. And when I talk about God, don't forget there are six and a half billion people on the planet and each person has a, a perception of what God is or what they understand God to be and whether we are atheist, agnostic or believer and I understand in my life I have been an agnostic, don't know atheist, don't believe in or a believer that there is a God but it depends on how we define God for ourselves and that's our own unique authentic take and again to the person who asked me what happens if someone tells me their understanding of God and it's not mine and the answer is continue with your understanding of life whether you're an atheist, agnostic or God believer it doesn't matter what matters is when you're coming out of addiction is to be sober and to deal with life with humility so I've got a very simple definition of God it is truth, the absolute truth of my life situation today, truth as it is, not my opinion about it, love, how to love people and be loved back without conditions, and wisdom that I gain from other people and the universe, providence I call it. So truth, love and wisdom for me represents God, the ultimate power greater than me, truth, love, wisdom. So I can be a part of that and included around that. So I don't have a problem with God anymore. I just have a problem if people tell me I ought to believe they, the way they do. And of course I need not do that. And nobody need do that either. So when it says, ready to have God remove all these defects of character, if I'm living one day at a time, then everything happens in real time. I can only remind myself what will happen if I get fearful, put on a brave face, and driven by ego to cover up and try and prove I'm okay when I'm not. So my defects will come out when I'm under pressure or I feel I ought to be doing something or should be doing something or, I'll be, or I'm being told to, to do something which impinges on my freedom of choice. And the problem is in our great big society as it is people feel trapped and addiction is the ultimate trap we feel we have no choice but to continue down that path until we die and the truth is for me these days if my needs are met my basic needs are met I need not follow any other path into other people's doom or structure or organisation I can be free to be me be part of something if I can believe in it or let it go and let people get on with what they're doing different outlook completely so it's not about me and my opinions and attitudes because I'm full of it like everybody else it's about how these 12 steps keep me on my own unique authentic path of life and defects of character will pull me back into old attitudes and old behaviours very quickly I will be reading from this over the months but I will also do a video which is just step 6 at some point in the next day or two I've done enough for now <clears throat> my videos seem to get longer because YouTube allow me but I may wander off the point or I may stick to it don't forget this is part of my daily reflection and uh, I do it as much for me as for anybody else if it helps and of course the great news is you can switch off at any time thank goodness for that 
so the serenity prayer which helps me on a daily basis to God or good conscience or your power, higher, power, higher power as you see it God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me in the moment and just for today my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behavior and uh, my addicti addictive substance alcohol my behavior trying to be this or that trying to be the best I could and uh, not realizing that progress is best and uh, never to be perfect and maybe to be forgiving of myself in recovery that I will only get to the middle ground with any luck and see life as it is and you know that's a big turnaround for me I was driven by fear of failure most of my life and I uh, didn't know why and that was simply because I didn't know what life was all about and I guess I learned that from my father as much as anybody who also had the malady of alcoholism but we didn't know that because we were ignorant to it as he drank we joined in so we learned and th these days I just don't drink one day at a time and why? Well partly due to knowing and understanding and admitting and accepting I am a, an alcoholic which means recovery is good so on a daily basis I remain in recovery and yesterday was my fifth anniversary and I, I was amazed actually that people were interested to know in the fellowship and they were very pleased because it's half a decade without a drink inside me so for half a decade I've been making a little bit of progress each day learning who I am today so it's incremental and the gift really for me is I learned a lot over the years about me and my outlook I learned a lot about coping strategies and one of my coping strategies was to take the edge off try and find fun try and relax and in the end try and find oblivion using alcohol it served me well for a little while and it was fun and then it became part of a life maybe that was distorted and off where I, I would have been best served and doing service and being a part of life so I don't look back and I don't look back and resent I don't look back and think what if I'd done it differently I'm realizing I needed every moment and every drink to find sobriety and the trouble is it's very dangerous and it kills most people off so I'm very grateful still to be here even though I've got one or two maladies along the way which are in included in my daily recovery program so alcohol was my substance and any old behavior you know to trying to be perfect in work in relationships it was always there what makes it help what helps me most is uh, the support of family community society and a fellowship and uh, my fellowship is AA Alcoholics Anonymous I don't speak for it it's full of unique authentic people who can speak for themselves if they choose to do so but nobody speaks for AA because it only has one purpose and uh, the preamble which is shared at I've just been told 720 meetings in London each week goes like this AA Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism so we just help each other the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions and nobody puts in what they haven't got AA is not allied with any sect denomination politics organization or institution it's not a cult does not wish to engage in any controversy it doesn't have any political views neither endorses nor opposes any causes our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety so it has one primary purpose as a fellowship that sobriety for ourselves and other people who are looking for a way out of the addiction so you know that's it, that's its simple part then there are 12 steps of the action to take attitude and behavioral change if you like if you wish to do them uh, some people exist with just doing the meetings and that's fine but it's a process of osmosis I found the more you go the more you learn and that's why we share experience strength and hope each, each time we go about how we're doing right now as much as where our history is so I'm a very grateful recovering alcoholic and I could have been a drug addict had I had uh, I suppose more ego more fear 
and put more brave facing to do I don't know I think the addicts the addict drug part just speeds up the process and uh, when I've gone to NA meetings although drugs were never really my story I just find that everybody goes at a hell of a pace so I quite like the pace in AA it took me a long time to get there and I hope I stay there a long time and it's a, it's a settling down process to find this elusive spiritual, emotional and physical recovery and it's one day long so I don't have to try too hard once I got the message and understood I could be alive a little bit longer by not drinking because certainly I would have been dead without the fellowship I know that yeah pretty much certainly so I make no um, bones about it fellowship helps me uh, anonymity provides sanctuary to find for people to find their truth and how to get well and I share about my my how the fellowship impacts on me rather than saying everybody ought to go to AA I don't believe so there are more ways to skin a cat and there's more ways to get sober but AA really helps me and uh, the 12 step program which got, we've gone into June step 6 which is we're entirely ready to have God or our good conscience remove all these defects of character so as we did our moral inventory in step 4 which I talked about in April moving on to step 5 where we share the details of our assets and liabilities we then get on to saying okay on the liability side what are my principal defects of character or things which I do to extremes so for me in the old days it was too much fear too much brave facing and a lot of brittle ego going on trying to look right rather than be right so step six is actually saying okay well what are these things I do too much of and it goes on to say step six necessary to spiritual growth the beginning beginning of a lifetime job recognition of difference between striving for objective and perfection so striving is good perfection killers will kill us I suspect why why we must keep trying being ready is all important necessity of taking action delay is dangerous rebellion may be fatal point at which we abandoned limited objectives and moved towards God's will for us or opening up our you know our lifetime possibilities rather than trying to keep it all under control because one of the principal defects we have is we think our way is the only way so as with AA as a fellowship and me as a human being when anybody, anybody finds a, you know, an interesting way to keep in recovery I want to know about it because it's good because there are so many ways to be sober and uh, that's the, from the 12 by 12, 12 steps and 12 traditions 12 steps keeps a, uh, keeps a person on the right track the 12 traditions keep us in a fellowship where it's safe to be truthful and uh, anonymity is the principle which helps people find their spiritual base spiritual outlook in this one daily reflections for June 2nd it talks about the upward path here are the steps we took there are, these are the words which, that led into the 12 steps in their direct simplicity they sweep aside all psychological and philosophical considerations about the rightness of the steps they describe what I did I took the steps and sobriety was the result these words do not imply that I should walk the well-trodden path of those who went before but rather that there is a way for me to become sober and that is a way I shall find and have to find for myself it is a new path one that leads to infinite light at the top of the mountain and as I've said before at the top of the mountain you get a better view of what's possible rather than in the valley where we only have our own personal view the steps advise me about the footholds that are safe and about the chasms to avoid. They provide me with the tools I need during the many parts of the solitary journey of my soul. When I speak of this journey, I share my experience, strength and hope with others. And that's what I do here. You know, experience, strength and hope of how to be sober. So uh, it was a bit of a lesson last night. I went to my home group at the Boltons, uh, which is a step tradition and chips meeting. So I was looking to get my five-year chip and the irony is uh, on this occasion the cupboard where the chips are stored was locked and nobody had a key so uh, undeterred in my I suppose insistence in my own head that I may be able to get a chip on my fifth birthday I then went to the Servite Church for the, uh, the, se the, the second half if you like of that meeting and what they had every chip but one yes they didn't have the five year chip so you know what I just take it as it is and sometime this week or next week I will get my chip 
but you know what, that's old behavior can come out as a defect there. I want it now. And the answer is, I'm waiting for it. So, as I always say here, the serenity prayer, which can be said to God, good conscience, or your higher power, of your choosing and not mine. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, like not getting my five-year chip on my birthday. Courage to change the things I can, accept that I'll get it sometime. And the wisdom to know the difference, laugh at myself for being so insistent. I don't need to worry about that. So, there we go. Don Eleven here, May, no, June 2nd, 2008. And I'm just back from my evening meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm an addict and an alcoholic, both at the same actually, in recovery. And tonight I just picked up my four year chip. So, four years sober as of yesterday. I don't know that I'm that sober at the moment because uh, I feel I'm, like I may be in love, which is a beautiful thing. It's uh, something I never expected to happen. So, how am I feeling today? Uh, up, I guess. Up in the clouds, but with my feet firmly on the ground and uh, relieved that life is as it may be. And these videos are all about recovery. So, the good and the bad of life. Our meeting tonight is all about the 12th step of AA, and it reads, Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs. And oddly enough, I had to say tonight that I wasn't quite sure where my spiritual awakening happened, because when I first went to Alcoholics Anonymous, I hated it. I detested the fact that I couldn't get on with what they were saying, and that at that time I felt I could still beat this disease or illness on my own. And I reckon the, the first spiritual awakening I, I've ever had in all my life is to realize that I couldn't do it on my own, and it couldn't get any worse, the drinking that is, and my life could not get any worse, it simply couldn't, without, well, some help. And uh, that admission, I cannot do it on my own, meant that I didn't have to struggle anymore with my will, my willpower trying to make me well. You know, some of the gifts of sobriety are beyond, they're a bit of a scream really. I mean, I'm looking after a parrot for somebody in the fellowship. And uh, when they asked, would you mind looking after my parrot, I said, of course I'll look after your parrot. But I had no idea how big his cage was, or that the bird would be talking to me constantly, and chirruping and clucking, and chuckling, and shouting hello, and doing wolf whistles. And I've been trying to teach it to say, hello Don, as opposed to hello Ted. Because a parrot called Ted, who shouts out hello Ted, it doesn't see seem to be quite right somehow. But, you know... By the end of the week, if, it's shouting, if, if Teddy the parrot is shouting out Hello Don, I'm sure its owner will be very pleased, rather than some swear words that one or two people have suggested I teach it, him. So that 12th step, all of that spiritual awakening, and I guess my spiritual awakening is simply living in the day, and uh, doing that with less denial and less filters in between me and reality. And uh, it's not life, isn't it, you know, having a parrot to stay for a while. But the gift is, really, uh, knowing that I, I can keep asking questions of the owner if things don't look right. And uh, <coughs> yes, no, she rang me the day before yesterday just to say that her grandma and her son were having a lovely time, and so was she. And uh, I then asked her about this spray bottle. And I said, you know, you've left me a spray bottle as well with all, all the parrot seed and paraphernalia. I can't really understand why I would need a spray. Oh, and she said, well, Teddy likes a bath once a week. And uh, so I get, filled it up with tepid water. Not too hot, not too cold. Sort of parrot temperature, I thought. And uh, she said, he will cooperate with you. If you give him a bit of a spray, he'll do the rest. And lo and behold, I sprayed a bit of water at Teddy. And he lifted his wings out, you know, like this. And they opened them so you could actually spray inside his wings and down his body. And... Uh, I think I got a bit too, too enthusiastic and he, he uh, looked at me quizzically as if to say, why am I dripping wet rather than just sort of shower wet? Anyway, he was a bit, a bit bedraggled and he turned around and opened his wings again and I gave him a good dousing on the back of his wings and the top of his head and he started to look a bit thinner you know, as the uh, water, he was waterlogged actually and it was dripping off his fur or his feathers. 
So I thought I might have gone too far. And she also mentioned that you, you can't leave the parrot in a draft because they get colds. And the poor parrot was sitting there on his perch. Uh, he did a bit of flapping to get most of the water out. And then uh, he's sort of hunched up, you know, really like this, his head down. And uh, weird, really, because he was shivering. And I thought, oh shit, oh, I've gone too far. And uh, will he be all right? And I had to go out to lunch. It was a gr great lunch because it was with my sister and my mother. And when I came back, he was still on his perch shivering. And I thought, I left the heating on for him. I shut the window so he wouldn't be in a draft. But, um, you know, that's how I was lucky. Anyway, now he looks really good. He looks like he's had a proper bath, and his fur and his feathers, or his feathers generally, are nice and clean. He's luminescent green at the moment. A bit like my head. I think my head's a bit all over the place, but you know, that's love, isn't it? You fall in love, and uh, your head gets a bit weird on you. What is this thing called love? I like I like song titles. They make very good text messages. And uh, there we go. Anyway, today, just have a look at the daily reflections for tomorrow. I missed doing today's and I apologise, but they were good and they did work for me. But these books, like this, Daily Reflections, are very helpful. So it says June 3rd, Ho Ho, no, here we go, all about parrots, on a wing and a prayer. When we look at the step when we look at step six, we have emphasised willingness as being being indispensable. That comes from the big book of AA, page seventy six. And it has nothing nothing in it about telling the parrot. Anyway, steps four and five were difficult but worthwhile. Now I was stuck on step six and in despair I, w I picked up the big book and read this passage. I was outside praying for willingness when I raised my eyes and saw a huge bird rising in the sky. I watched it suddenly give itself up to the powerful air currents of the mountains. Swept along, swooping and soaring, the bird did things seemingly impossible for mortal, mortal birds to do. It was an inspiring example of a fellow creature letting go to a power greater than itself. I realised that if the bird took back his will and tried to fly with less trust and with that power alone, it would spoil the apparent, its apparent free flight. That insight granted me the willingness to pray for the seventh step of prayer. It's not easy to know God's will in each circumstance. I must search out and be ready for the currents, and that's where prayer and meditation help. Because I am of myself, nothing, I ask God to grant me the knowledge of his will and the power and courage to carry it out today. And step six, that covers quite a lot of the steps, actually. It's a bit like Jonathan Siegel, Jonathan Livingston Siegel, which I've got to read. But what it says here, step six is we're entirely to have God remove all these defects of character. And as you know, God for me is good conscience, uh, truth, honesty, openness, and love. And if there is a God, God works through people. It doesn't matter what my version is to anybody else. It's what makes me able to work with, with life as it is. And my defects are, you know, too much fear, too much brave facing, and uh, resorting to ego to keep me going when my confidence fails me. So my defects are doing too much of those things. And uh, step seven, which is about shortcomings, not doing enough of the right thing, which is having courage, faith and confidence on a daily basis. And I do emphasize these things over and over again because it's just so easy to get trapped, trapped in fear. And uh, I don't feel fear, fearful at all today. It's just been a good day. I've done a chair this morning at 7.30. I haven't got a clue how to get there, but I've got there in 25 minutes with a few minutes to spare. And I did my chair, all about me, my experience, strength and hope, and using As Bill Sees It as a, as a starting point. And I used the reading which I, I shared yesterday, but uh, today's one, or tomorrow as well, between the extremes. The real question is whether we can learn anything from our experiences upon which we may grow and help others to grow in the likeness of the image of God. Likeness and the image of God. And, you know, it's not an image so much as a sentiment and a feeling and an understanding with uh, nature and providence for me around truth, honesty, good conscience. So that's just half of this and we'll never get rid of the other half either. It's not about that for me. We know that if we rebel against doing that which is reasonable, reasonably possible for us that, when, that we will be penalised and we'll we be equally penalised if we presume ourselves a perfection that simply is not there. Apparently the course of relative humility and progress will have to lie somewhere between these extremes. 
In our slow progress away from rebellion, true perfection is doubtless several millennia away. And I have to agree that you know, it take thousands of years for me to become perfect, or even half perfect. And the, the, the beauty is, the, the goalposts change every day. So when we feel we've achieved quite a lot in one day, the achievement is not forgotten and gives us wisdom. And when we start a new day, we have to start with the same size all over again. Same size as everybody else. Same opportunities to find our spiritual path. My time is up.